Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Jacques from the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Salmon louse infestations are a major cause for economic losses in the salmon aquaculture industry. The dominant ectoparasite affecting captive salmon is Caligus roger cresei. You know, it increases production costs by roughly $480 million annually. It's quite amazing, really. The, the parasite feeds on mucus and blood, harming the skin, which is imp an important barrier against other disease organisms. It also causes stress. It certainly can't be fun having your skin chewed off. No, that's definitely not a good experience. But you know, these parasites can be treated with pesticides. Unfortunately, the main problem is that they become resistant. Well, actually, yes. Uh, Nunez Acuna looked at exactly this, and they were looking for resistance markers. It's true. They identified multiple SNPs through various developmental stages of the salmon louse. And importantly, they suggest that ATP binding cassette transporters, also known as multidrug resistance protein 1, or ABC for short, could be a potential marker for evaluating resistance to pesticides. Well, ABC transporters also are implicated in drug tolerance in mammals and marine vertebrates. And the markers can also be used to study host parasite interactions at the transcriptome level. It's true. I mean, just imagine being able to test the parasite for drug resistance before you actually treat it with a pesticide. Y you know, that's a great idea because if you're going to have to use pesticides, you might as well use ones that work. And, you know, so we also reduce the impact that these chemicals have on the environment. And another important aspect is to use these pesticides effectively is to understand how they are processed by the target organism. That's true, and Chavez Martones et al. used gene expression analysis to measure activation of various genes in the antioxidant system of the sea louse in response to different amounts of delta methrin. Oxidation is catalyzed by the cytochrome P450 enzymes in insects and mammals. And you know, the <coughs> biodegradation of pyrethroids in crustaceans and fish occurs through an increase in the levels of reactive oxygen species and free radicals. So in the louse, it means that the delta methrin activates genes that produce free radicals during degradation. This makes the pesticide more effective in controlling the parasite. It's absolutely true. And you know, free radicals damage all components of the cell, including proteins, lipids, and DNA. And in humans too. That's why we should eat our fruits and vegetables, right? <laughs> Getting back to the sea louse, uh, an interesting finding was that increase, increases in the dosage from one part per million to two parts per million led to a very small increase in the gene expression. But a greater dose increase didn't really show any changes at all. Yeah, more isn't always better, and uh, there really is that balance in everything. You're absolutely right. You know, I often wonder how sea louse knows where its host is. I mean, it, I mean, what, does it smell the fish? <laughs> <laughs> you mean a fishy smell? <laughs> well, they actually do. Seriously? Oh, yeah. The Acuna et al. studied the transcripts involved in the olfactory system in the sea louse. And um, the parasite responds to cues produced by the host, which helps it find and latch onto its target. Yeah, I remember that paper. I think the authors also identify novel transcripts involved in odor reception, like the inotrophic receptor and the glutamate receptor. Um, they also study changes in transcriptomics expression during different stages of the salmon louse development. Yes, it, it is interesting that diets with masking compounds actually showed about a 25% decrease in louse infestations. You know, that's amazing. I mean, so there may be a way to trick the sea louse's olfactory system with chemicals so it leaves the salmon alone. <laughs> <laughs> in the long run, it should be possible to develop decoy odorants so that that would really confuse the louse. It's great if you can mess with their little brains. <laughs> <laughs> Today we explore how sequencing can help us make food more affordable and safe. Remember, there is a balance. The better we understand these processes, the more intelligently we can control them to be safer and more effective. Thanks for tuning into our show today. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment below and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.